Hi, Dan Goodstein here with ERPA AI. Welcome to this week's executive interview series. Today, I'm joined by Manjeet Singh. He's the Director of Product Management at ServiceNow. Manjeet, good to be with you. And uh, if you don't mind, give everybody a little bit of uh, your background. Uh, hi, Dan. Glad to be here. Um, yeah, so my background is uh, uh, I am part of the product management team at ServiceNow. Um, I joined ServiceNow uh, five years ago uh, and worked on IT service management side for, uh, for uh, four and a half years. Uh, but more recently, my focus is uh, on the new product incubation. So it's, uh, now we have a new product, basically business unit, uh, where we explore what are the new possibilities, what new capabilities and tool set we build on top of our platform. Um, so before uh, joining ServiceNow, I spent uh, five years with HP, Hewlett Packard, and then a bunch of other startup. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I was a software engineer turned product manager, and here we are uh, looking into all these, uh, you know, new sort of, uh, you know, the exciting opportunities. Yeah, great, great. Well, thanks for uh, offering to share your story. And uh, I know we want to talk about process mining and this idea of kind of continual uh, automation. But, but first, I have to ask you about uh, the ServiceNow uh, acquisition that was uh, announced recently of RPA startup uh, IntelliBot. First, why did you guys decide to jump into the RPA space? Uh, yeah, so I think good question, Dan. Uh, so I think the best way to uh, understand this is, uh, so at ServiceNow, uh, we are a platform company. Uh, we serve 7,000 plus, you know, the big enterprise customers. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and what our customers are asking now is uh, that, hey, how can we automate more and more work, right? So this Automation rate KPI has become one of the key KPIs, I would say, um, at the same level as your customer satisfaction or employer satisfaction. Um, so we, if you look, if you look at our kind of the tool stack and what uh, what is a, you know the our core strength is, so we have a very strong workflow engine, both for IT customers uh, and as well as uh, employees. Uh, we had the our app engine studio, right? So this low code, no code way to build application. Uh, and then, uh, if you look at we uh, did a bunch of small acquisitions in the last two years, all in this space of AI and ML. And I think the the one missing part there was uh, that how we can allow our customers to automate uh, across these, uh, you know, the legacy systems or where they. Uh, automating something using API is a big challenge. So I would say our strategy is uh, is is not that you know we want to be you know an RPA uh, player. I would say our strategy is two part. One is continue to support uh, the all the external vendors uh, in this space. Um, that strategy will continue. Uh, so all the leaders in this space, we already have connectors uh, on our uh, service now store. But now uh, with the, this acquisition, we want to power up the, uh, I call it a kind of an embedded experience of the entire automation. So you're building app using our creator workflow. And if you see a need to, you know, the, whether it's the attended or unattended use case, you can integrate some of those, uh, you know, the RPA bot type of automation right there. So um, I would say that's in a nutshell uh, uh, how uh, we, we see it will fit into our platform. And, and last, last point is uh, our goal is always to re-platform any technology that we acquire. So any acquisitions that we have done so far is not to leave it as a standalone kind of a silo tool. Uh, we always look for that, hey, is it easy to re-platform? Um, and then, so it's basically, you know, the. Uh, the, the technology and what we liked about uh, uh, IntelliBot specifically is how easy their stack was when it comes down to creating kind of the bot in a kind of low code way uh, from your desktop. And I think that will really complement and uh, um, uh, closer to what we do. And you, you alluded to, to no code. So, so how, how important is the no code thing to your offerings as a whole? And, and what can you tell us about what's kind of on the horizon as it relates to the RPA piece? 
it is a super important and I think it's becoming uh, now this, uh, you know, uh, there is a trend of kind of low code and we started on this early on, uh, you know, the, now I see all the platform, uh, all the big platform vendors, you know, start to use the same story and it's obvious, right? Um, so we we had our you know the app engine or we, we we had a few different names and iteration, but when, I think the gist of it was that uh, on top of the workflows that we provide to customers like our ITSM solutions or ITOM or our customer service, uh, the our customer have been creating apps on ServiceNow platform from you know the. Uh, I would say from beginning, um, and our goal is to how we can make it uh, more easier and easier, and and speak to all the other different business unit in the company, and that's where you know the hey this uh, you know the citizen the concept of citizen developers or um, how you can democratize the the usage of those you know the. Uh, th those needs and then needs for automation or needs to, you know, the customization so that those teams can do by themselves rather than solely relying on kind of this quote unquote central IT. Um, so, yeah, I think too, uh, it's super important. And that's, uh, you, in fact, recently we launched our fourth workflow. We call it a creator workflow. So, so that's our kind of Uber story around that how you can, uh, uh, bring and automate more and more work onto ServiceNow platform, uh, which is basically, you know, the single data model, one platform, and it has its obvious benefits. Got it. Got it. So, so let's talk about process mining. Um, you know, many, many platform companies, not just ServiceNow are, are acquiring or building uh, their own process mining capabilities. What are you guys doing and, and how do you see it kind of fitting into this enterprise service management uh, equation? Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, I'm happy to uh, share if you, somebody, you know, the, if you're not a service now customer, we recently launched uh, our process optimization solution. So we natively and organically built this onto service now platform. Uh, and before I basically, you know, speak about, hey, this, uh, you know, our offering is out, I think it's uh, important to see uh, this entire landscape of process discovery, right? If we, uh, if we say, hey, before we used to this automated mining, what was the best way for customers and, and people like you and me to map out the process and then... Right. It used to be happened through like the interview and observing people, uh, but now as platforms like ServiceNow, we have the, all the entire audit trail in the system. So it makes sense to uh, um, uh, extract your process uh, from those audit logs. So you don't have to do, you know, the, the, uh, that repetitive and manual task and then still not sure whether my process is correctly mapped or not. Um, and, and then as, as you've seen, I think the reason this whole process mining thing is picking up because those models have evolved, you know, the, even from the open source community and now you can easily just feed in, hey, this is my activity, this is my timestamp, this was the actor and you can just, you know, stitch them together. And, and just doing that first step provides a huge value because then you can have more meaningful conversation is, Hey, this is how work flowing on, let's say, for example, on service now, uh, IT service management or customer service management. And then you start with this kind of top down view that this is my, you know, inefficient path or, you know, the, the multi hop tickets or cases, uh, and then go into a more targeted discussion and, hey, let's find out what's happening behind the scene. Um, so the uh, and so this is kind of the the server side of mining. The other part, which you may have heard, like task mining, and uh, you know, um, the way I see it about out is that uh, both have its own benefit because this uh, ultimately it's come down to the data, right? What data you can capture from the server side, and wherever you have the gap, let's go to how your end users are interacting with those processes. So that's where you see, you know, the, there's a lot of good work happening on the past mining side. But to me, I think the holy grail is uh, is uh, able to combine these two type of mining activities. What's happening on the uh, on on your cloud systems? What's you know what your users are doing, 
and that gives you a more full picture. Uh, and that's where uh, I see, you know, our offering will also evolve uh, in the future releases. So, so you're so you're a believer in, in process intelligence, yes? Because, like, like you say, it's it's. I think the the first term that was out there was data mining, and then it evolved to process discovery, and now process intelligence. So, so it's not just spin and, and hype. There really is a, a difference in your mind. It is, yeah, because you know we talked about automation, right? And the big question there is, uh, hey, what to automate? Which process is right? Like, start from there, and then what? set of activities that, that we should automate. Because if you just throw automation blindly, uh, I, I think that's not the right, right, right strategy because then you, you may you know, have some success in the initial POC, uh, but it will impact other KPIs that you will be surprised to see later on. And uh, so I think that's where it's uh, able, able to understand and, and simplify the process first before you, you apply your intelligent automation or whatever tool set that you have. That way it is a, uh, you know, you will be more confident of your, you know, the business value and outcome and set the right expectations. It makes sense. It makes sense. So, so, so your goal is uh, from a service now standpoint is really to, to be the center of the wheel for the convergence of all of these things, right? Process mining, RPA, low code, workflow automation. Yes. I would say uh, yes, but then one uh, different here is, uh, uh, our scope is only service now data. So, you know, the compared to, you know, the other generic player that you see, but in the mining space or in the RPS space, uh, we want to do really good job for the service now workflow and service now data, whether it's, you know, the mining part or whether it's the automation part, because that's where we have a huge, as I said, we have 7,000 plus, you know, the uh, big customer. And if we, if we can, create a best-in-class solution, depending on whatever their needs in automating, you know, the, whether it's a, the IT task or like, you know, the, uh, your customer case, like employee onboarding or, uh, or, or these, you know, the, the, uh, the infrastructure side of uh, workflows. So I would say our battleground or, you know, maybe battleground is not the right term, but is to serve our customers' need and also play really well and complement, you know, let's say other, other player in the mining space or in the, in the RPA space. So that customer have choice, right? If they see you know, the needs that are broader than what we serve, uh, they can continue or, or will use those other solutions. So you, you, you've obviously been part of a lot of these conversations, you know, a lot of the conversations I have with members is, you know, uh, a lot of standalone processes being automated, a lot of uh, uh, random acts of automation as it's been coined, uh, a lot of people trouble uh, struggling with getting to, to scale. Uh, so what's your advice for, for someone watching who's really trying to get into a, uh, a mindset of continual automation, whether mm -hmm. it's hyper automation, intelligent automation, or kind of RPA 2.0 uh, at scale? Uh, and, and, and what happens then to you know, these, these siloed solutions? Yeah, so I think uh, uh, this word siloed is always, you know, that if you, anytime you take that approach, uh, you can only go this far. Uh, but uh, I think to your question is like, hey, how, what is the best way to get started and to scale? Um, I think this concept of COAs is, 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 is interesting. That, that's where, uh, you know, and I, and I would say, uh, don't, we shouldn't try to, you know, the uh, boil the ocean and make your processes too hard, whether you're setting up your center of automation or um, whatever you call it. So the, I think the advice uh, I would give is uh, based on, uh, tons of customer conversation I had and the research we did. I think the best way to, uh, you know, the identify those core two to three use cases first, right? What are the, you know, what business area, what pain point those teams have, um, and and start with the core processes, right? So, for example, if if I, uh, you know, look at the uh, ITSM. Incident is very core process because that's where there's a lot of volume and transaction and a lot of teams involved, right? So that's where I would say uh, it's best to start from incident or change management because that's where you will get the, the fastest ROI. 
and there are a lot of easy and low hanging fruit that you can uh, uh, you, you you can latch on and and reach faster time to value. But from I think from the scalability standpoint, there are many other important pieces, right? You talk about security and governance and uh, and and how you can create uh, let's say the you, you know the evangelizer within the organization because ultimately it comes down to you know the human tools can be you know the, as good as uh, it can be, but to really make it successful, it has to be people, processes, and tool, right? Uh, so. No matter, I mean, it's funny, right? Anytime is, uh, no matter where do we start, it all comes down to this golden triangle of a PPT. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, hu the human side of automation, yeah. Yeah, and 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 the way I've seen the the people angle working really well is uh, right. You you create your initial success first with core process, as I said, and then start to share within your you know the other employee groups and cross teams, right? Hey talk to, let's say, for example, marketing or sales, say this is uh, some of the use cases, how we have done. And now let's talk about how we can make it reusable, where we will share our best practices. And, and then you will see, hey, this concept of COE starts to emerge. So, uh, and that, and I think that's where, you know, the uh, maybe start a little bit of bottom up and then you uh, make it, uh, you know, the keep it as I'll because if you you know make it uh, too process heavy and then you will see a lot of resistance happening from people. Um, another last point I would say is all that always comes up is, hey, the automation and then what what is your plan around like training and coaching those people, right? If, yeah. uh, if let's say you are automating whatever X number of labor hours uh, for whatever persona the, that you have in your, in, in your business unit, what is the plan for that free hours? You know, the uh, what are the other projects and well, you know the and I think that that discussion is a little more than you know uh, as a fine an automation manager. It has to be involvement with your you know the HR business partner and then have the plan. So so that so that way it's, it's a healthy environment. It's not that you know the automation is uh, is going to uh, going to eat the world. <laughs> Good advice. Majid Singh, thanks for being here. And it was a pleasure. Uh, good, good to chat and uh, I'll stay in touch. Sounds good. Take care. Thank you.